Hi all, I'd like to show you a very interesting game played by the young Kasparov in 1979. It was actually in his hometown of Baku and it was against the fellow player who was born in Baku who's called Elma Magramov. Baku is now called Azerbaijan. Magramov is an international chess grandmaster nowadays. In 1991 he shared first place in the last USSR championship held with Artashes Menishin losing the title on tie breaks. In 1992, Magramov, according to Wiki, became the first chess grandmaster in the history of Azerbaijan. He played Kasparov several training matches and tournament games with an overall score of plus four, minus eight, and drawing seven. And he had an extensive coaching career and in fact had been national team coach of Tunis. He coached Kasparov during the 1984 World Chess Championship and Mad Chibandazi during the 1991 Women's World Championship. He plays on the ICC under the nickname of El Marmalade and in fact I've had several game encounters with live commentary on this channel and I'm pleased to say I did take him down in one of those games. You can check out the scalps video link which I may put in the description of the video. So here uh, Magramov was playing white and played d4 Kasparov played knight f6, and then we see c4, e6, and white avoids the Indian territory with knight f3. And that was like Queen's Indian territory, and usually some solid options still include bishop b4 check actually, even though there's no knight on c3. b6, uh, d5 is very, very solid. This this move Kasparov chose is very dynamic. c5 it invites a Benoni structure, but it's avoiding the very critical Benoni lines with the early f4 and bishop b5 checks. White actually doesn't want to play d5 here. Instead, d5 is the most common move. Instead, he played actually g3. And it's very interesting, this opening phase, because after c takes d4, which is the main move, knight takes d4, d5 is the main move again. So that's in a head blunting the bishop, but it also has some other interesting options and ideas behind it. After bishop g2, the interesting theoretical idea uh, is usually what Kasparov did play now, e5. And knight going to f3. But here, the most common move by far is to actually play d4 in this position. So in this position, d4, and the idea is this pawn is actually immune because of this check. So that can't be taken. The check is for king, king and knight. So it's weakening, okay, some of the light squares, but uh, with knight c6 to come, black's enjoying a space advantage, potentially dangerous pawn on d4. But surprisingly, Sparf actually chose something different, which may have put the opponent um, in a bit of a surprising situation. He hasn't, maybe he hasn't analyzed this position that deeply. Knight d4 looks entirely, entirely logical. And it looks as though now, isn't this going into a kind of reverse Alakine defense where this pawn chain seems to be falling to bits? Well, the pawn chain uh, is voluntarily dismembered with d takes c4, grabbing a pawn, inviting white to try and regain it. Uh, there's various ways of regain it. But uh, maybe the most cautious way of trying to regain this pawn is very, very slowly with just castling. But in the game, actually, uh, we see knight c3 putting more pressure just on this pawn. And let's put on a kibitza here. This is a very, very interesting position theoretically. It looks as though, isn't this a bit crazy uh, what black has done? It has advanced his pawns and he's allowing his pawns to be fragmented. Isn't white going to get one of these pawns back? Uh, with advantage, it's like playing against a hypermodern opening, a tempo down. But there is a target knight on d4 here, so bishop c5 is not giving chance to white to do anything apart from do something about this knight. And here, Magramov plays this queen a4 check, and it looks a very decent way initially, not just to protect potentially the knight, it's also interfering. If black plays knight c6, then we can just play a uh, knight takes c6 here, and we're on that bishop after. So that's a disaster. So it's interfering. If black has to play bishop d7, there's no pressure on d4. And this looks very interesting. Move queen a4. So bishop d7. And now white plays queen takes c4. 
So here, as the engine suggests, why it's only slightly better. It looks as though even though this is a potentially weak pawn, and the queen looks active in some respects, it looks potentially quite quite useful. But we see here after queen b6 again, there's this nag on this d4 knight. White plays now at the move bishop e3. Another option is actually e3. That's another way of securing that knight. And maybe white can look forward to just after casting putting pressure on e4. Uh, so this this is an interesting option. If, for example, uh, like this castles. What does actually black do? He has to start defending e4, and it should be a pleasant enough position for black. But on the other hand, this queen is a bit of a tactical liability after rook c8 is going to happen. So anyway, let's go back. So here, bishop e3 securing the knight, and we see now knight c6 putting even more pressure on d4. Now here it does give uh, option the option for white to play knight a4, but the king in the center means that actually black has bishop b4 check very usefully in this position. Of course not bishop d2, we could just take and take on d4 there. So if king f1, this doesn't look too pleasant for white. Surely white hasn't got much of an advantage here. Engines confirm that. If a3, in fact black can play queen takes, we get a continuation a bit like this, where actually black is doing very nicely. So still he's holding on to that e4 pawn very comfortably and it's very, very nice. So let's go back after knight c6. White actually played knight c2. Okay, wanting to exchange off the bishops. Sparoff obliges with bishop takes e3. And unsuspectingly, Elmar Magramov plays actually knight takes e3. If he knew what was coming up, he would have played f takes e3. There's a bit of a shocker coming up here. If I give you 10 seconds, you might want to pause the video here and guess what Kasparov played. So it looks as though at the moment, and this e4 pawn's weak, it's dropping off, but there's other factors and elements in the position here. So if I gave you 10 seconds, what would you play in this position with black at move 14? Okay, I hope you got it. It's a bit of a shocker. Knight a5 actually wins the queen. Where, the, where is the queen going here? The white queen has no squares. Hasn't got b3. Why is taken that away? If the knight had gone to e5, then we've got queen b3, but the knight has gone to a5 instead. No squares for the queen. The best white can do is just lose a piece instead of the queen by playing knight e d5, hitting the black queen. But then we just take here and we we'll just piece up after taking a takes. Let's piece up. Thanks very much. So actually, after knight a5, shockingly short game, this in 1979, Elmar Magromov, Elmar on ICC, had to resign. So I think that's very instructive for the opening phase, how a, li a little innovation there off the beaten track can sometimes have very, very dramatic implications. Now, Kasparov didn't play the standard d4, but rather ventured e4, very, it seemed very bravely, as though his pawn chain is going to be undermined later. But bringing out the queen, the queen was actually a tactical target. Very interesting. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.